Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello, hello, hello and do I have a treat for you for mold 74. I am so excited to be collaborating with Kelsey White Designs this episode and you'll see her work later on in the video. So first up I poured this mold which is a round mold and I open it up and you can see straight away that it's this delightful flower shape. So I trimmed the base of that off and it wasn't coming off straight away so what I did was use the air compressor to blow the little piece off and when I flipped it over I realized it was this gorgeous paint palette and I know that Kelsey asked me if I ever find something that she could use in her art practice to let her know so that's why we collaborated on this one here's a look-see at the mold it was made in 1985 it says that it's a paint palette and it's also got this band on the mold that shows you exactly where to put the rubber band when I opened the mold, I thought this is so perfect for Kelsey. So I contacted her and she was so excited to paint up her own designs on this piece. And I just thought it would be a lovely way to see a mystery mold included in her art practice. Kelsey White Design specializes in graphic design and illustration work and uses a lot of color like me, which I adore. And I thought it would be nice this week to have Kelsey feature on the voiceover as I talked to her about how she found working with the pottery medium and what she did for her artworks. So first off, what did you paint this week on your mystery mold pieces? So I did three different designs, one inspired by my wildflower drawings, which was a scraffito effect, another one which was these really delicate lines around the curve of the paint palette, and another one that was inspired by my vegetable illustrations. And then there's one more that Shelby and I worked on together. How did you find working with the medium of pottery compared to the mediums that you usually specialize in? I think I've always really wanted to work with pottery. I find it such an interesting medium and so different to anything I've ever done before. So this was such a fun experience to try and so much to learn. It, there's so much to learn in the world of pottery. What did you like about this medium in comparison to other mediums you've used? I really liked trying something new um, and understanding or trying to understand the way that the glazes worked and it's so different to paint it's like painting with liquid chalk and then you don't even know what the color is going to look like by the time it comes out of the kiln so you're kind of anticipating it it's so hard was there something that you found challenging that you didn't realize was going to be challenging at the time so when Shelby showed me the mold I was like this is perfect I love painting I can't wait to have a little paint palette to use for my watercolors and my acrylics but then when I came to actually painting it I realized that it's a curved surface on the inside, right? So it was really hard to paint my fine little lines on the inside of the paint wells. Um, and then I realized, you know, I didn't want to cover the paint wells because that's where the paint sits. So I decided to paint my vegetables and my scraffito wildflowers around the outside. But there's only a tiny amount of space there. So it's really hard to paint detail in tiny, tiny little spaces. Another thing Kelsey and I did was we decided to collaborate on a piece by doing a two minute challenge and that is where you do a two minute timer, one of you paints and then the timer goes off and you swap hands and they paint for two minutes and you keep going until the artwork's done. And we had some thoughts about this process. It was quite an interesting thing that I had never done before. How did you find it? And then I'll tell you how I found it. <laughs> So I started out with an idea in mind and then sharing that design back to Shelby was really interesting because she couldn't see or know what I was trying to do. <laughs> so then it turned out completely differently, but you just have to embrace that sometimes, you know? I also found that interesting because I had no idea what Kelsey was trying to do and I don't think Kelsey realized what I was trying to do either. And so I think our ideas were sort of competing each other, but I think that's what made it so fun and exciting because we didn't know what it was going to look like in the end. The thing I found the hardest was actually the two minute time frame. I just felt like I couldn't get enough onto the palette in time and it was really a crunch for time. I think having to rush the two minutes really got in the way of actually being creative and the fact that we couldn't talk to each other about what we were trying to achieve. I think that's it. It sort of limited your creativity because you were so focused on getting something done by a certain time that it almost led to a creative burnout in that moment of not having any ideas on what to do. And I guess that plays into 
being an artist in general is that we shouldn't put time constraints on our art. So that was the end of that little collab and here are my pieces so I'm going to talk about them and then I'll get Kelsey back to open up the kiln and have a look at her finished pieces. I'm also doing three pieces this week. The first one you can see me drawing now is that I did a little bee and flower piece with some little bees zooming around the outside of the palette and some flowers in the center as well. The second design was based off the shape of the palette is that it looked like a flower so I decided to do the center well as a little smiley face and then I did a white satin speckle glaze which is a new one for me trying out I did that around the outside and then the third design was actually inspired by our little challenge and also Kelsey's work and that was something that I didn't realize would happen was being inspired by someone else in the space is I ended up doing a rainbow one as well but this time I did a row of rainbow houses around the outside of the palette and then one big house in the center well as well. I have wanted to do a collaboration mystery mold for the longest time so I have collaborated with other small businesses but never directly onto the pieces so it was so lovely to have the opportunity to work with Kelsey White Designs and to see her work come to life on the pieces that she created and I think there's just something so magical about sharing your medium with someone else and seeing the way that they interpret interpret something that you're so fond of and so used to using and seeing the different challenges and the excitement that they get from the medium that you have learned to love. I would really like to know if you enjoyed the collaboration this week because I would love to include more of this type of video of another artist coming into the space and or maybe in their own space painting the mystery mold so let me know in the comments. But regardless, I found the exercise so inspiring, especially that two minute challenge. I think a lot can be said about time constraints on art and how time can have so much pressure, especially when you turn your art into a business. It can become very time devoted and trying to execute things within a certain space so that you're making money. And I think sometimes that can lose a bit of the joy of the practice and can cause a lot of burnout in that regard. So allow yourself time and allow yourself the space to create the art that means the most to you. If I could share one tip about time and turning your art into a business is to allow yourself at least one hour or two hours during your week and just let your creativity roam without it having to be a profitable thing. I think it just allows that sort of burst of energy to come out. It allows you to flow. It allows you excuse to not make profit off your art because I think that's the biggest thing that causes our burnout in this sort of industry is that our pressure on time, our pressure on needing money to keep doing what we love and those conflicting with each other that causes creative burnout. So give yourself two hours just let it go don't let it be something that needs to make you money just allow yourself to make mistakes try new things and hopefully that'll help with that pressure of time within your art business here Kelsey and I were both thinking that that two minute challenge was going to be so fun and so inspiring but it just opened up this whole other can of worms and reflection about how much time can impact your art practice so on to the glazing I first started off by dipping these pieces into the glaze bucket, but as you can see, it only did the top rim because the wells are quite deep. So I had to go back over with a brush of the glaze. I then packed them in the kiln and I thought it would be really nice to get Kelsey to open the kiln for the first time to see her reaction. I think I've become a bit complacent with <laughs> opening the kiln over the years. And so it's really nice to see Kelsey's reaction. I've left the sound on this video for you to see it in real time. I have something here. Oh my god, that's the light. Oh my gosh. It feels like I'm holding a baby. <laughs> oh, my oh my god. Oh my god. I can see your if your words as well. Oh my gosh. Oh I'm gonna cry. <laughs> oh wow. Oh that, that was a fully genuine reaction right up here. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at the little oh that's the script we call it scrapita. Yes. Yeah wow. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so How exciting excited. is it? Oh wow, oh the colours, the little stripes came out so good too. I was so worried about like doing two coats of them. 
Anyway, um, we can do that again, sorry. I just thought that moment was so special to include because you could just see the joy on Kelsey's face. Like she was aware that she was being filmed, but her reaction was just so genuine of the magic and transformation that the kiln held. And I feel like I've almost become desensitized to it because I do it so often, but it was just so beautiful to be a part of that and to have my own sort of reminiscent of how magical I find the kiln as well. So let's take a look at Kelsey's pieces, then mine. What did you think of your finished results? I'm so happy with how all of these turned out. I can't believe it. It's so much better than I even expected them to be. The colors are so vibrant and beautiful. Um, and I'm just so, so happy to see them all make it out of the kiln alive. <laughs> <laughs> in reflection of your finished pieces, do you have three tips for aspiring artists that you'd like to share? Three tips for anyone who is a creative or an artist is to try something new. I think trying this process and trying pottery and glazing was a really great way to get my sort of creative brain firing and thinking about things in a different way. Um, I think it's really important as well to make friends with other creatives because the way that they work will help show you different ways of doing things. And I feel like I've learned so much from working with Shelby. I've learned about firing, mold pouring, and even editing videos. And I'm so grateful to have had a chance to finally play with some pottery. Um, and also ceramics and glazing takes a lot of practice and trying new things can be really tricky. So don't give up if you think something new is hard. There's so much reward from persevering and keeping going. I'm so glad, for example, I didn't give up on my stripes. They were really tricky uh, to do, but they look so good in the end result. Now I'm going to show you my finished results and then we'll see the paint palettes in action on one of Kelsey's artworks. So the first one was the bee and flower palette. I really love this one. The bees came out so cute. I think it's simple and minimal while still allowing the palette to function really well. And you can kind of see those little bees poking through once you use all your paint, which is really nice. I love how sketchily these little houses look. I think it's really fun and exciting. One of the purples did burn out to a pink, so it sort of wrecked the whole rainbow, but that's okay. I like the color of the house in the center as well. Here I have my little daisy faces. Here's one I didn't paint on camera, a little sad face to match my little smiley face. I do really like how these look. I think I could have gone maybe one or two coats more on the speckled glaze, but they kind of look like eggs, which Kelsey said to me, which I think is really awesome that they not only look like daisies, but eggs as well. All in all, I really love this mold. I just found it a little bit tricky to use for design wise, because technically you want the color of your paints to be the aesthetic thing in this palette, not the drawings you have done on them. So for that reason, the design aspect of this mystery mold was a little bit trickier because you want the paint to be the hero. I do absolutely love how this item has done the circle of life from being clay painting by Kelsey and then being used to make future creative magic with her painting work. I also want to take this moment to say a massive thank you to Kelsey for being a part of this episode. I really, really appreciate your insight and your creativity and sharing this mold with you this week. Thank you so much to Shelby for inviting me along and letting me play with pottery. This has been so inspiring and I'm so excited to use my palettes. As always, thank you so much for watching and here's your sneak peek for the next reveal.